Hey everybody, Rubber Mold Man here, and today we are going to do a small uh, cement mix from beginning to end so I can show you our process. Now I'm going to be doing it on a very small scale because of the video, uh, but it's the exact same process no matter if you do it large or small. Before I get started, I just want to go over a couple things. Uh, first of all, I'm doing this outdoors for the sake of the video. However, if you've watched my videos in the past, you know that if you're using latex rubber molds, you don't want these to be in the sun. Now right now I'm shaded and that, so it's fine, but as soon as I'm done filming this video, these are going inside my uh, shop. I have a, these little uh, work tents that I use all around the property. It'll be going back in there to stay out of the sun. So don't do this outdoors unless you're gonna protect your molds from the sun. Uh, second of all, these are already prepped. Uh, they have the mold release in them. Uh, again, I have videos on that, but if you're not familiar, it's a mixture of castor oil, not castrol motor oil. There's been some uh, confusion on that. It's castor oil uh, that you'll find in the you know health and remedy section of your store. Castor oil mixed with a large amount of rubbing alcohol. That's put in there, drained out, so uh, it has a coating, so that way the mold will release from the concrete after it's cured. So, I'm gonna be doing this mix out here on a very small scale. Uh, I'm gonna show you the ratio that we use. However, the size of the, uh, uh, the like for instance, I'm using pint size for the materials that these can be as big or as small as you need. It doesn't matter. So you gotta kinda determine how much uh, actual cement mixture you're gonna need for the amount of molds you're doing. Uh, for this video, I'm just doing it on a small scale so we can keep it easy. But I'm gonna show you how we do it. You choose the ratio as, as uh, or, or I'm sorry, not. I'll show you the ratio, you choose the amount, uh, but I use Portland cement, just basic Portland cement, pea gravel, sand, and what I start with is some water. Now the water, I never add too much at first. That's what I start with. Just to add some of that in there, because you can always add more water. It's really hard to thicken your mix if you make it too watery. So we're gonna put some water in, then I start with the pea gravel. Pea gravel is the heaviest part, so I like to make sure that's mixed up really well. Now I'm gonna add the uh, cement. So it's one part pea gravel, one part Portland cement. Put that in there. I'm just gonna give that a quick little blend. Excuse the noise. Now you see I'm just using a drill with one of these mixing paddles. Uh, that's all I use. We don't use cement mixers. We use vats uh, with different size drills and different size uh, paddles like this. Uh, they make a much better, creamier mix than using the conventional cement mixer. And that way too, if you're just starting out wanting to do this in your garage, you can make a little bucket's worth of uh, material and you'd be surprised how far that will go. I've actually tested where about a half of a five gallon bucket of cement will actually produce anywhere from two to $300 worth of uh, these size statues. So it's amazing how far the material will go. But let me go ahead and blend this up real quick. Okay, and you see it's still pretty watery. That's fine, because now we're gonna start adding the sand. Gonna add one sand. Blend. Looking pretty good. Now the other sand, and it is two parts sand to a mix. So remember, one part cement, one part gravel, two parts sand. Water as needed. Now, since this is such a little uh, batch, it mixes up super quick like that. Normally you have to blend it for a little bit longer, but that looks good. And the consistency from what I can tell seems to be about where I like it. Um, pretty runny. Now, if you're just new to this and you think of cement as very thick, like what they use for mortar mixes for brick laying and that, this is how you want it for this. This is how our family's always done it. And this is how we get pieces that come out with hardly any air bubbles uh, and they look really nice. So I'm gonna just take one of these. So basically at this point, Take some of that mix. We're gonna pour it into the mold. Get it about two thirds, two thirds of the way full. Maybe a little more. All right, now at this point, what I do is I take the mold and I just kind of shimmy it back and forth. Just a little back and forth so that the cement in it is sh uh, shifting back and forth. Kind of like you're sauteing vegetables in a frying pan, just getting them back and forth. That's always what I think of but just back and forth and that will get the uh, air bubbles out better than anything I've found. Some people take a mallet and hit the, the mold with it. I find just shifting it back and forth, even twisting it, uh, seems to work the best. So I'll do that with both of these, just a quick little 
shift back and forth. By the way, if you're wondering why the molds are black, uh, I just announced that I, am, I came up with a new material for the mother molds uh, that is, uh, seems to be superior to the traditional. Uh, and uh, I'm starting to make all my molds like that because I actually prefer it and that's what I'm going to sell on my website where I sell the molds too. So uh, they are supposed to look like that. All right, let's top them off. A little bit more there. And you see with these, these are turtle figurines. So the legs, you got to kind of shake it, get it over there. And I always, at this point, put a little extra in the middle because these will settle just a bit. Uh, some of the water will release over the next few minutes. When the water comes to the surface, just tilt the mold to let the excess water run off. Give it one tiny little shake, not a lot, just a tiny little shake to let it settle again. And then always have a little bit extra material left that you can top off if needed. So, in fact, I always tell people it's a good idea to have one or two little molds on the side. So if you have extra material, it doesn't go to waste. So we're gonna get that there. Of course, this table isn't the most level here, but I'll make do. So we'll just shake that in a little bit more. And we're gonna top it off. And that's pretty good for now. So, for me, when I do something like this, I'll have dozens of these molds. So I do a bigger batch and I do them all. By the time I'm done uh, filling the last mold, I can usually come back and uh, do the last little quick vibration, get the water off, and uh, go through them all doing that. And then at that point, I usually can come back with a little scrape, like a flat paint scraper or something like that. You can use a trowel, whatever, but the little scrapers work fine. And you just smooth out the bottom. Real easy, real quick. You just wanna make sure it's nice and smooth and flat and level on the bottom. So when you take the statue out, it's gonna sit level. You don't want them to wobble. That's really it. So uh, I'm gonna take these inside now and uh, finish them up and let them cure. Uh, and I'm gonna do another video where I actually demold them so you can see the process of that. Uh, how this mix turns out. But that is the basic mix using the separate material. I'm going to do another video coming up soon where I'm doing the same kind of mix, but I'm gonna use the pre-bag uh, mix where all the ingredients are together because they're not really good to use for statuary on their own. I'm gonna show you how you can still use those though and get great results. So uh, until next time, keep in mind all my uh, video, uh, excuse me, all my information is underneath this video. Uh, check out my website and all our social media and you know the drill. Uh, until next time though, Thanks for watching.